one. All right, we're back with the great Carl Verheyen, and he is the accomplished guitarist who, of course, the longtime guitarist of Super Tramp and has played with so many, so many greats over the years. And, of course, uh, in the documentary Turn It Up and uh, listed as the, one of the top 100 guitarists in Classic Rock Magazine and top 10 guitarist in guitar magazine carl what an incredible career and i know you uh probably see no end in sight you know it's amazing what you do and uh from the hallowed uh canyons of topanga canyon right. with all that history um talk, talk about you know uh your solo career starting in 87 and you know mm -hmm. still still coming to this day what you've uh mo most proud of achieving with that well, I just got back from Italy where I did a, a series of small theaters for two weeks. And uh, I've got tours coming up in uh, September, October, November, and a lot of little dates between now. This is, uh, this is the beginning of May. So, you know, uh, it doesn't seem to be slowing down in 2022. It seems to be ratcheting up. I'm turning down festivals that I'd like to do because I'm already doing something else. Uh, yeah, the band started back in 87. I just come off the road with for the first couple super tramp tours and uh, my my goal, my desire was to put something together that, you know, a lot of music inside me. Uh, and, and as a musician, the creative side, your own music is the most creative because I've been a studio musician for a while. I've been a member of super tramp for a while. But there's that pinnacle of creativity is putting out your own songs and your own music. And um, so, yeah, that's when we did the first album. We did it in two weekends. It was called No Borders. We recorded like Saturday, Sunday, uh, one weekend, and then the same Saturday, Sunday, the next weekend, and then mixed it, uh, it you know, real quick. And then, yeah, the record started coming maybe every two or three years. Uh, garage sale was 94, then 96 was Slang Justice, 99 was Slingshot, 2001 was Atlas Overload. And, you know, so I've just continually done records all this time. And then in 97, I was playing a festival in Long Beach, California. And this guy named Walter Trout was on the bill and he's a blues guy. Great, great blues singer, guitar player. We were on the bill together. And he said, do you have European distribution? And I, at that point, I just didn't, you know, I said, no, I think, you know, we sell records in Europe, but it's only because of the uh, domestic label. So he says, well, I'm going there Monday. If you give me one of your records, I'll give it to my record company president. And he goes, I really like the way you play. I like your sound, I like your music. He goes, I'll give it to the president, but let me warn you, I've given him 50 CDs and he's rejected every one of them. So he went over there and uh, I got a call from that label literally by Friday of the following of that week. And they said they wanted to sign me only if I would agree to come over and tour in Europe. And of course, all I wanted to do was do that. So that was very fortunate, just a nice little change of events to where I could go they, they put my record out. It was called Slang Justice, and it did really well. And I got over there and started touring and, you know, was shocked to see posters of myself around town and these shows pretty well sold. You know, in other words, they were it wasn't I wasn't playing to six or seven people. I was started out playing to, you know, 50 to 100 people. And then the next tour was 100 to 200 people. And so it really built it up over the years. Yeah, that's incredible. I know uh, myself growing up around the world, you know, Europeans have such a uh, love for for music. And, you know, there's so many examples over time, like Tina Turner, after the I Can Tina Turner review had run its course um, before she put out Private Dancer and became, again, the, the, the one of the greatest to ever do it. You know, the Europeans kept her alive. She could always go over to Europe and play and so many examples of that where you jazz know, musicians, you know, American artists are revered. Yeah. I mean, Herbie Hancock said if it wasn't for the European festival circuit, he would have had a tough time in those middle years. So, yeah, there, there's a nice thing going on over there uh, whereby like just this it Italian tour uh, of the 10 shows I did, three of them were supported by the local uh, 
government. You know, in other words, three of them were the Arts Cultural Commission paying for it. So, um, you know, and they, that's a good thing because, you know, we don't have a lot of that here where they, where they bring in artists and, and pay them, you know, the city. So, sure. And yeah. now I know coming up to date, uh, Grand Design in 2016, where you uh, had a documentary made and yeah. uh, 2018 Essential Blues and 2021 Sundial. Tell right. us about your latest records. Yeah, the newest record was sort of done in that pandemic period. And um, I did that at about five different studios around the country. I wanted to, I wanted to record... I knew it was the 50th anniversary of Layla. And uh, I wanted to record down in uh, Miami at Criteria Studios. So uh, all I did down there was vocals, but it was just incredible to be in the room where Layla was recorded, you know, with Clapton and Dwayne Allman, you know, two huge heroes. And uh, some of Hotel California was done there. You know, it's a very much a legacy studio. So I did it, so I did there, I did uh, Sunset Sound here in LA. Um, you know, which is kind of my home base. And uh, yeah, it's kind of one of those records. It's all over the place. It's not one direct style. Like I can say, I can say that Essential Blues, which was the record before that was a very concise record. I decided I would wanted to, I wanted to do the Delta Blues, the Chicago Blues, the Texas Blues, the Piedmont Blues, the Jazz Blues and the British Blues. And somehow all these different styles would, would, work together on one record. So that was my goal there. With Sundial, I, I guess my only goal was to be uplifting. I mean, I really wanted to make a record that made me smile and made me happy. And um, I think I really succeeded because I'm still getting goosebumps in certain spots where these background vocals come in and just lift the whole thing. I'm still getting that kind of great feeling when I hear it. it. It almost surprises me after hearing it so much during the mixing and everything else that I could just go, ah, that feels good, you know, so. Yeah, what an amazing career and we can't wait to, to see you live. Uh, please go to Carl uh, dot com. The website will give you all the details on where he's performing and of course his history and you can dig into the discography and uh, all of the greatness that is Carl. 